Hey guys, Spirit of the Law here. The new Lords of the West expansion came out today and it's accompanied by a pretty large balance patch in addition to the two new civilizations. Let's look at some highlights from the new civs and the biggest changes. Starting off with the Burgundians, a lot of their bonuses were teased a month ago, but their original refunding of the gold cost for knights has been changed to 50% cheaper stable techs and the cavalier upgrade being moved to castle age. They are missing bloodlines, so the cavalier upgrade basically adds bloodlines plus 2 attack for 150 food and gold, which is still great value. They do have paladin and its upgrade comes at half price, but of course without bloodlines you're giving up quite a bit in the late game for your cavalry. Still, I think they're easily one of the best mid-game cavalry civilizations at the moment on paper. They also have 25% more attack on their gunpowder units, which shows up clearly in their stats. It seems to take their attack and bonus damage, multiply it by 1.25, and then subtract armor, which is a very generous way to calculate it, and hand cannoneers, for example, end up doing 32% more damage to champions, a little better than advertised. Their unique unit also has a charged attack for massive damage, but then drops to a fairly weak 11 attack subsequently. The recharge seems to take 40 seconds and can be done while it's actually fighting. Being strategic with how you use that and knowing when to disengage and re-engage is going to be a major aspect of the unit. The Burgundians also have a unique tech that converts all of your food to half as much gold as a one-time thing. And while we did know about that, they've now also added a permanent buff to your farmers to slowly generate gold. And they mean slowly. I did a short test and it seemed to be worth around an extra relic for every 45-ish farmers. So for very long games it could end up being roughly like an extra relic or possibly more depending on your number of farmers of course. I do like they give it a long-term value aspect so it's not just a one-time food to gold conversion that doesn't help you after that. Their other unique tech turns all villagers into Flemish militia which seem comparable to two-handed swordsmen. It's not completely giving up your economy because you can still retrain villagers after and it also unlocks the ability to recruit more Flemish militia at the town center for 60 food and 25 gold. Finally, their team bonus is that their relics generate 20 food in addition to the usual 30 gold. It's almost like having a permanent farmer for every relic you have, except you don't need to pay for the farm and it doesn't take up any population. At least some of this is probably going to change in the next update and is all in addition to having your eco upgrades in age earlier, so double bit axe on the way up to feudal age and horse collar whenever you want, early bow saw, etc. It seems like a combination of a good early economy, a huge power spike in castle age, and some permanent late game advantages to your relics and farms. The ability to turn your entire economy into military units also seems like a great way to make a comeback. Of course, the second civilization is the Sicilians. Their first important bonus to me is that they take half bonus damage on their units. So think knights versus pikemen for instance. Previously we were told this was going to be only 33% and you can imagine how versatile this bonus is going to be. Their major identity though is going to be, I suspect, around the donjon building. Starting in Feudal Age it replaces the watchtower but can create their unique unit. That's right, in Feudal Age. Their unique unit, while it is fairly weak, can then build more donjons, so it's a military and builder hybrid. The donjons do cost more than a regular tower, but also have better stats. The main advantage I see is that the tower can then create units, which then make more towers, and so on. Even just one forward villager can get into a lot of mischief. Sicilian villagers can also build castles at double the speed, which seems difficult to stop, especially on something like Arena, where you may be heavily invested in economy and not have the army on hand to stop it. They also have a unique tech that lets them spawn 10 of their unique units at each town center, up to a maximum of 50 in Castle Age. That's obviously a quick way to turn a boom into an instant Castle Age army, capable of building towers slash military buildings on the front lines. Their Imperial Age unique tech also gives them and everyone else on their team 15 gold for every military unit they own. Depending on how many units you have that might not be a massive amount of gold and it is also just a one time thing, but it could easily be a thousand gold per player if it's timed correctly. They're a very strong sounding civilization partly because there's a clear game plan with one particular unit and building, so I think they'll be easy for players to pick up and quickly use well. There's also always the debate about how strong to make civs on release. Obviously you want civilizations that are easy to pick up for the first time and compete with old ones that people have played and optimized builds for. Similar to the definitive edition release I expect some pushback about how strong they are and some nerfs will probably be coming down the road. But speaking of balance let's take a look at all of the changes coming to pre-existing civilizations. Starting with the more general palisade walls and gates have their HP reduced by 40% in dark age. Now 40% is a big reduction, but this is just Dark Age, so maybe you figure as soon as you hit Feudal Age, they're theoretically back to normal and no harm done. On the other hand, it means any damage taken in Dark Age is magnified by an extra 67%, as the walls retain not the damage taken, but the percent HP they had when you reach the next age. 
In this example, 52 damage taken in Dark Age becomes 87 damage after Red hits Feudal. Of course, quick walling against Militia is also going to be a bit tougher moving forward. Another big change is that the trick of scanning with buildings to find the enemy in the Fog of War was also removed. A place building just simply can't be built by the villager if there's already something in the way. Next up, the Cavalry Archer's attack animation was reduced from 1.3 to 1.15 seconds. It's still slower than the Crossbow or Mangadai and it is a noticeable delay, but it should be a nice little buff if you're trying to micro them. Getting into civilization specific ones, the first notable change is to the Rambai, who have their missed shots now do full damage instead of half. If you're unaware, missed shots that incidentally hit a different target than intended do half damage in general. This is a big deal given how inaccurate a Rambai are. To offset that, their attack was reduced considerably, though the reload time is now a bit faster. Altogether, taking their 20% accuracy in Castle Age at face value, at long range against a unit with 2 Pierce Armor that gives them 22% more damage output. At close range though, it's more like a 27% damage reduction from what they were before, as units are more accurate up close. A side effect is also what means they're more impacted by enemy Pierce Armor. This should probably keep them about the same or even slightly better as a ranged unit against a large group, but worse when they're up close, which is where they were previously a bit overwhelming. Moving on, the Franks have finally been nerfed. Their Forager bonus was dropped from plus 25% to plus 15%. I'm curious if this dethrones them from their top spot in the 1 vs 1 rankings. I suspect they'll still be incredibly strong, but it is a step in the right direction. Another major shakeup is the Hun's Atheism tech no longer affects Spies and Treason. Definitely way more useful in 1 vs 1s now, and makes much more sense with its name Atheism. The final Attila mission just got quite a bit harder, but this is a good change overall in my opinion. Basically, this costs your enemies 15 gold per minute for every relic they have, and in a 1 vs 1 that could end up being as much as 60 to 75 gold per minute, making it much harder for them to add siege for example. The Italians also had some interesting changes, reducing their dock technology discount, but adding a 33% discount to all university techs, while also reducing the gold cost of the Genoese crossbow. Personally, I think the Italian's weakness is in the early game, which isn't affected by any of this, but ballistics being cheaper is definitely handy if you're going for crossbows. It saves 100 wood and 58 gold right there, making it quite a bit more affordable to get early. Between Siege Engineers, Bomber Tower, and Chemistry, you save another 900-ish resources, helping them get to some of their late game options more consistently. The Mayans also had an interesting change of replacing Obsidian Arrows with a new tech, giving their skirmishers a second projectile. Don't worry, it doesn't double their attack, and in fact it's quite inaccurate even at point blank range, and only seems to do 1 damage from what I can tell. Technically that means double the damage against rams, but overall I think it looks a little scarier than it is. It's definitely not as situationally crazy as obsidian arrows could be. But speaking of archers against buildings, the Saracens are back to their old team bonus of plus 2 versus buildings, and lost their anti-building attack. Interestingly, it doesn't even seem to apply to cavalry archers anymore. Instead, their camels now have plus 10 HP, giving a nice buff in castle age, and their unique tech zealotry only gives plus 20 instead of plus 30. In effect, their late game camels are unchanged, but their castle age ones are better, and zealotry is a bit cheaper. And finally, the Tatars lost their town center sheep spawning bonus, except from newly constructed town centers in castle age. I'm a little sad about this one as the extra sheep from Castle Age Town Centers felt like the useless part of the bonus to me. It was the extra 2 in Feudal Age and how that lets you delay your farms that made it fun and interesting, and was a very needed buff for Tatars not that long ago. Looking at the last patch, they were a below average civilization for every elo bracket, including 1650 plus, while at the same time having a play rate spike when the extra sheet bonus was added, implying people thought it made the sieve more interesting. Their Keshik's cost was also increased from 50 to 60 food, though I think it's the cheap gold cost that makes this unit strong, and that wasn't affected. So those were the sieve balance tweaks. There are also a few new maps added, and let's take a look at those. The first is African Clearing, which has a nomadic start with trees around the outside and lots of ponds to fish. This one seems like a lot of fun with tons of food and open space to play with. The next one is Atacama, which is incredibly open around your starting base and has a large patch of trees in the middle. It reminds me a bit of Gold Rush except with wood instead of gold, and also seems like an incredibly aggressive map. Even trying to decide where you want to place your first lumber camp has some interesting trade-offs. There's also a new one called Coastal Forest, which has a very similar idea of a giant forest in the middle, but with fishing along the edges as well. Again, this feels very aggressive and difficult to wall with the starting town centers so close together, and it seems like you're encouraged to expand your base all over the map. If all of these very open maps are making you want to curl up and hide, there is another one called Amazon Tunnel, which seems like a more structured and extreme version of Black Forest, having a square clearing in the middle holding the relics and some very easy wall-offs. This one's perfect for people who just love walling and defending choke points. 
And finally, there's Seize the Mountain, which is basically migration, but with walkable shallows and a large central island to fight over. The patch notes are in the description if you want some of the details, but basically the AI had some updates, there were some updates to pathing and modding and all that stuff. I read through it and none of it really jumped out at me as something I had to include here. Now of course you get the balance changes simply for owning the game, but the expansion civilizations go for around $10. That does sound like a lot compared to the roughly $20 for Definitive Edition, but I think a lot of us realize this is about justifying the ongoing support for the game. For what it's worth, the two new civilizations are fun to play in my limited chance to try them so far, but take that for what it's worth. That's all for this one though. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time.